The Dutch Grand Prix is over and F1 is moving straight on to the Temple of Speed at Monza for the Italian Grand Prix. Which means that once again it is time for my preview and predictions. This is the series I'll be previewing and then at the end of the video I'll be giving out my early predictions for the Grand Prix. If you enjoy the video then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top teams later on, so please do stick around for that. Yep, F1 is back at Monza, which will be the fastest race of the year, and the race where we see the teams and drivers use the least amount of downforce that they can get away with, as straight line speed is the name of the game. And this year, the circuit has been slightly modified in areas and also resurfaced, which means that we might see times be even faster than what we've seen in the past, as the new surface may provide a bit of extra grip for the drivers. The changes include a wider first chicane. I imagine this is to try and reduce the chance of a collision at the start of a race. The Lesmo corners have also seen a slight modification and also the Ascara chicane has seen some large changes to the curbing, which could potentially allow the cars to attack the corners more aggressively. This is to say that I expect that the lap times at Monza will be even faster this year than what we have previously seen. The teams will be bringing the lowest levels of downforce that we will see all year. This will be seen by the rear wings being what are known as T-tray wings as they are essentially flat which is the complete opposite to what we have just seen at Zandvoort, where the teams were trying to get plenty of downforce on their cars for all of the corners. When it comes to the tyres at Monza, historically we have seen incredibly low tyre wear. This because the tyres do not have the same levels of load put through them due to the low downforce. However, with the high speed, there is always a risk of blistering the tyres. But even so, Pirelli will be bringing the softest tyres in the range, which is a complete opposite to what we've just seen at Zanvolt, meaning that the C3 will be the hard tyres, the C4 will be the mediums, and the C5 will be the soft compound of tyres. Last year was a very straightforward one stop as there was 25 pit stops altogether. A couple did do two, but in general it was a straightforward one stop. I expect that it will be another one stop race using the medium tyres and then going to the hard tyres. The pit lane loss time and general low wear means we don't usually see multiple stops, unless of course we do get a late race safety car. Overtaking at Monza is actually pretty difficult despite the very long straights, and that is because the low downforce setups means slipstreaming is less effective than at other circuits, and the DRS is not as powerful as what we will see at other tracks as well. And you can see that as last year there was a total of 31 on track overtakes. To help with overtaking, the circuit features two DRS zones. The first DRS zone is down the long pit straight heading into the first chicane, and the second DRS zone is on the exit of the second Lesmo corner, heading down the back straight into Ascari. It will be interesting to see if any of the circuit changes will help make overtaking any easier. Last year, the pole position on lap time was a 120.294, and that was set by Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. During that lap, Sainz reached a top speed of 350 kilometers per hour. During the race itself, the fastest lap was set by Oscar Piastri in the McLaren, and that time was a 125.072. If Monza is faster, as I anticipate that it will be, then we will see both the pole position lap time and the race fastest lap being beaten this year. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about Mercedes. For Mercedes, the Dutch Grand Prix was a bit of a disappointing one. Hamilton started way down the order after going out in Q2 and then receiving a grid drop penalty for an incident with Perez. Russell also gave up track position during the race to Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz with a second pit stop and then he failed to make up any of the ground and Mercedes were beaten by Ferrari, McLaren and Red Bull. Hamilton did manage to recover to finish in 8th place, but this was pretty poor. I anticipated a much stronger race from them, but it looks like they were struggling more with tyre wear as they ended up doing a two-stop with both drivers. Going into Monza, I can see Mercedes potentially being the 4th fastest team once again. I don't know if this circuit will be the strongest track for them. 
The strongest circuits for them typically feature high-speed corners like Silverstone and Spa. Monza, however, doesn't really feature any of those high-speed corners, and instead, they are plenty of chicanes. Mercedes are also not always the fastest car in a straight line, which is something you do need around this circuit. So yeah, I can see Mercedes being the fourth fastest team this weekend. For Ferrari, the Dutch Grand Prix was a much better race than really it had any right to be. Carlos Sainz went out in Q2 after not really doing any laps in practice. And honestly, for a while, it didn't look like they were going to be in a good position, but Charles Leclerc managed to hold off a significantly faster McLaren car and hang on to score what was, in my opinion, his most impressive podium of the season. Yep, I do think it was even more impressive than his win at Monaco, just because the Ferrari car isn't that strong anymore. Ferrari looked much stronger in race pace this weekend, which is something we have seen a little bit this year with their ability to look after the tyres. But they are now a long way away from McLaren and Red Bull when it comes to overall pace and performance. Going into Monza, I can see them having a slightly stronger weekend. One of the main strengths for Ferrari in the last couple of years has been their ability on the brakes and getting the car to stop from a high speed. And, well, you do need that at Monza because the long straights are separated by tight chicanes, which are big braking zones. I don't expect them to be in the running for the podium, but I can see them being a little bit stronger and a little bit closer to McLaren and Red Bull, but they're going to be the third fastest team this weekend. For Charles Leclerc, he is looking good and he has actually now scored two podiums in a row. Admittedly, I don't think he really should have been on the podium in both of those races, but it goes to show how strong Leclerc has been. And Carlos Sainz, he had a great recovery drive at Zandvoort, and if he can have a clean weekend, then I can see once again both Ferrari drivers being very closely matched. For McLaren, it was pure domination as Lando Norris won the race by over 20 seconds at what was in the past one of Red Bull's strongest racers. And honestly, it looked very easy in the end. Norris was even able to set the fastest lap on the final lap of the race on old hard tyres, which he took from Mercedes, who set their fastest lap on much fresher soft tyres. It looks like the latest upgrades have propelled McLaren into being the fastest car overall in the sport. And honestly, I can maybe see them starting to regret the decision to have Norris move out of the way for Piastri in Budapest, because despite it still being very, very unlikely, there is a slight chance now that Norris could fight Max Verstappen for the Drivers' Championship. Like I said though, it is very unlikely. But what is not unlikely is McLaren will fight Red Bull for the Constructors' Championship, because I can see McLaren now overtaking Red Bull in the team's championship. They're only 30 points behind, and they're getting closer with every single race. And the next few races after Monza will also see McLaren being very, very strong. That being said, Norris must still improve his ability off the line, because once again, he lost the lead at the start of the race at Zandvoort, and Zandvoort is one of the shortest runs into Turn 1 of the year. Monza, however, is one of the longest runs, and therefore Norris cannot afford a bad start. Monza should be another strong race for McLaren, due to McLaren's ability in the slow corners, but they might not be the fastest car in a straight line, which is going to make things very interesting because I anticipate their closest rivals will be one of the fastest cars in a straight line. And finally, for Red Bull, they got a second place with Max Verstappen. However, this was a bit of a tricky race for them, and now it really does look like they are no longer the fastest car in the sport, as McLaren absolutely dominated that race. This is now five races where Verstappen has not won, and this is his longest run since 2020 without winning a Grand Prix. Going into Monza, Red Bull should be a faster car in a straight line, which is going to be a positive for them against McLaren. However, Red Bull will struggle a lot with the chicanes, and also with the low downforce, they may struggle with balance at stopping the car as well. And because of that, I can see this being a bit of an issue for them. Even though they're going to be faster in a straight line, they're going to struggle through those corners. 
they must improve because the first chicane and the second chicane are very tight and require the drivers to use the curbs to get the best line through those corners. Thankfully for Red Bull though, tyre wear will not be an issue, so they don't need to worry about McLaren having better tyre life over a stint. Honestly, if Red Bull wants to win this one, I feel like this is going to need to be another race where we see Max Verstappen drive the wheels off the car to find McLaren. And you never know, we might just see that with what Verstappen typically does. So, what are my early predictions going into the Italian Grand Prix? Well, I think the fastest car in the midfield will be Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin, as Aston Martin are typically very strong in a straight line. They may face some competition from Haas, but who knows if Haas will even make it to Monza. And if they do, they might be struggling because they might not be able to prepare fully due to the ongoing issues with their former sponsors. But now, what about pole position in the top five? Well, for pole position, I'm going to go for Lando Norris in the McLaren. I think Verstappen will be faster in a straight line, but I can see Red Bull struggling over the curbs and through those slow speed corners. So, what are now my top five for the Grand Prix? Well, in P5, I'm going to go for George Russell in the Mercedes. P4 will be Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. P3 will be Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. P2 will be Oscar Piastri. And I can see Lando Norris making it back-to-back -back race wins. Especially if McLaren is as fast as what they could be now. But, those are my thoughts. The question is... What do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.